This is a clip from my YouTube live show where I talk about how I use Vim, InVim, and my favorite distribution, SpaceVim. I talk about the extensions I use and how you would set up, install Vim on different systems a little bit. And then I talk about Vim Adventures, a cool website where you can learn Vim as a, as a new Vim user, learning the commands. So have some fun. All right, so uh, before we get to any more questions, I know, thank you, you all have uh, uh, more, more questions. I wanted to talk about Vim real quick because that, that was the, one of the topics that I wanted to talk about. All right, so uh, Space Vim. So Vim, we all probably have heard of it. If you're not using it, you've probably heard of it. It is, for a lot of us, it is very frustrating to use and to get started with because it's so different than everything else you've ever used. So. One of the, the two things I want to recommend um, is how, how are you going to learn Vim, right? And the way that I recommend is playing a game. Um, see if I have it in my... Uh, Vim Adventures. So this is a really great game that I use, and every once in a while I go back and play it again. I, I don't... I don't think I've paid for it. I probably should. It's uh, only a few dollars. But it, it allows you to play a side-scrolling video game to learn the Vim commands. And it starts out super easy, and it goes... Um, it, I, don't, <laughs> I don't make any money, but I, you know, I should tell them that I'm constantly talking about their stuff on my podcast. Um, but this allows you to learn the basics of Vim and the keyboards. And because it's hard when you just want to edit a file, you know, and you don't know the, the, the commands... You don't want to use Vim because you don't even know how to use it. So like, you wouldn't use it. It's frustrating to get started with. So I'd say take an hour, like block, block out some time, go d try the first couple of levels for free. Uh, you can get pretty far in the game for free and it, you learn all the basics around. Um, I mean, uh, really, you, you could get by just knowing the keys that you learn for free in the Vim without having to pay for it with the Vim Adventures. But the next thing you're going to have to worry about is... How, you know, it's one thing to download Vim and get it on your machine, but that comes with nothing. It comes with nothing out of the box. So I, I recommend a distribution. Now, once you've had 10 years of Vim or whatever, or if you just really want to spend a whole week learning, you can customize your own Vim and tweak it by hand. But just like with the code editor with VS Code, I like it better than other tools because it comes with so much out of the box and it's just easier to get started. That's the same reason I love Space Vim. And Space Vim, uh, you can even run Space Vim in a container if you want to. Um, just look up Space Vim Docker and Docker Run or something. And this has great documentation. And what it is, is it's a whole bunch of add ons and plugins for Space Vim, or for Vim in a single install. So it has a one line install command and it works on Mac, Linux, Windows. And it's the way that I've been using Vim for years now. And you, what you do is when you set it up, it will, it can replace the, the, the standard command. So in my case, if I just do which Vim, you can see that I'm aliased to NVim. Now NVim, what is NVim? NVim is a, uh, it's not a rewrite. It is a team that, because uh, the original Vim project is really only maintained by one person uh, or that, that controls it. It's kind of like the Linux kernel. Uh, one person controls it. And the uh, NeoVim is an attempt to add a bunch of modern functionality and features, especially around performance, to the Vim project. So it's technically a separate project that tracks Vim upstream. But at this point, uh, a lot of us are choosing to use it as our default Vim. So normally you would have Vim and NVim on your machine. And if you're on a Mac, you can use Brew to install uh, NVim. And if you're on Windows, they have all the different ways to install it. They'll tell you how to install it for your different OS, right? And it works on all of them. If on Windows, you can try to use Chocolatey, which would be an easier way to do it on Windows. Chocolatey is a package manager for Windows. And that will get you the actual Vim editor. And then you would install Space Vim, which will change the default configuration for how Vim starts up so that when you are, let's say in this directory and I just type Vim, 
I get this. I get a nice little browser on the side with my file browser. I can, you know, go down and open up a file. I get syntax highlighting. You'll notice that I have uh, these bars on the top and bottom that have all sorts of information in them. That's not out of the box. Like all this stuff is coming with uh, Space Vim right out of the box. And you can set, you can change the themes pretty easily. And the documentation is really, really good. One of my favorite features is if I don't remember a command, I just hit the space bar. And the space bar then gives me this pop-up window. None of this comes out of the box with Vim. It gives me this pop-up window that allows me to uh, decide what I want to do next, right? And it tells me, oh, I can, if I want to open up files, I hit the F key. That's over here, um, right there. So I hit the F key. And then uh, if I want to find files in my current directory, I would hit F again. So that's this this menu item right there. And yeah, that's not going to work. because So it's popping up a menu to help me search for files. And then I can quit out of that. And then I can hit F and then I want to basically hide the file menu. So I knew I know that if I'm going to do something with files, I hit the F key. And then if I wait just a second, it'll re-pop up this menu thinking, hmm, maybe you don't know what to hit next. Let me show you. So the, the pop-up menu I find super helpful. Sometimes if you're just slow, it can be annoying because it's popping up when you're slow. But as soon as I hit the command I want, like in this case, the T for toggle my file tree, that file tree goes away. And then, you know, next time I can hit um, F spacebar FT and it pops back. And again, if I hit the spacebar and then F and I'm not really sure what to hit next, it will then, I wait a second, it pops right back up. And you can change everything about it. Everything in here is customizable um, and they have all the documentation on their website. So if, you're, if you've been thinking about trying Vim, it's a really powerful editor. And the, the, the reason that I think it's so important in DevOps is because Sometimes you will be on a server and you won't have Visual Studio Code. Uh, Visual Studio Code has plugins that allow you to even do things to remote servers, but um, more than not, you're gonna be in a situation where you have to use Vim because it's the only thing on your machine. It's a server on Amazon. You don't wanna install anything, but Vim's already there, or at least VI, right? Which is basically Vim. And that's gonna be there and you'll be able to use it to edit a file. I think that's a fundamental sk skill that we all have, at least if you learn how to get into a file, you know, take something out of it, delete something, add something in, move around in a file. Those are the super basics. You just need to learn those basics. And once you know those, you'll be able to jump on any server and manipulate it, right? Um, obviously, there's something called Nano, which if you're really not wanting to do anything with Vim and, and you don't want to learn something else like Emacs, there is something called Nano. And Nano is on most Linux distributions and it uses... It's uh, arrow key friendly and it has a menu so you know which buttons to hit. So it's much more friendly as a backup plan. So back in the 90s when I first got started in Linux, um, when it was really young and uh, Nano was actually on other Unix systems. It wasn't just on Linux systems. And I could use Nano because I didn't know Vim. Uh, but Nano had gave me a nice little menu and showed me what to use. So thanks for watching. You can click subscribe and the notification bell to get an alert when I go live so you can join and ask your DevOps and Docker questions. You can watch some of my other videos over there and you can do what I'm about to do and just go take a nap.